Obviously, huge milestone for you, as Guy said, $8 million in adjusted EBITDA profit. Is this something investors should get used to quarter after quarter? How confident are you Uber will continue to be profitable? Well, we're quite confident. And actually, in the indications guidance we gave for investors for Q4, we got it to $25 to $75 million in the EBITDA profitability. And I think for the foreseeable future, you can expect to see a company that is growing our top line at a very healthy rate, over 20%, as we expand into this $5 trillion mobility uh, total addressable market, as we expand into the delivery $5 trillion total uh, uh, total addressable market and freight as well, while improving the profitability of the business. We're really hitting that scale point globally uh, where we can deliver both growth and profits uh, for the foreseeable future. Now, I know you've been working on driver supply, but wait times are still longer than usual and fares are still higher than usual. How much longer will wait times and fares be elevated? Well, we've added, even just in the U.S. alone, 640,000 drivers and couriers to the platform. Uh, number of drivers on the platform is up 65% since January. Uh, number of couriers on the platform is up 80% uh, since January. And the good news is that the incidence of surge pricing are about half of where they were at their peak. Uh, average wait times are about four and a half minutes, so we're below that magic five minute mark. Not everywhere, but on, but on average. So the quality of, of the service continues to get better. You know, the problem that we have is we have too much demand as everything is opening up. Now we're seeing travelers go, uh, go to airports as well. Airport trips are up 20% just in the past two months, and for business travel are up 60%. So there's a ton right. of demand out there, and we are catching up to demand happily, but the demand keeps growing ahead of us as well. And at the same time, there is a huge labor shortage, inflation. We're heading into the holidays when companies like Amazon are sweetening the deal for holiday workers. Lyft co-founder John Zimmer told me earlier this week he's not interested in getting into a price war. He's focusing on differentiating, differentiating the product to win these drivers over. How big a challenge is it going to be to continue to keep drivers involved through the holidays, and what's your strategy? So I think the great news on drivers is that uh, driver earnings, first of all, are at at historical highs. Uh, if you're a driver who is driving more than 20 hours on the platform, so you're a pretty engaged driver uh, in a top 20 market, you're making, including tips, $40 per active hour. So the earnings are very high. And then within this world, you know, the Zoom world of ours, where we talk about flexibility and being able to work whenever you want, wherever you want, et cetera, that's exactly what Uber offers uh, for blue collar work, uh, call it. And you can choose to move people or you can choose to move food around as well. So we have the broadest platform than anyone else. So we think the combination of earnings opportunities, which are dynamite, and flexibility, whether you want to drive people or drive things, puts us in a really good position. And you can see it in the trends in terms of driver uh, drivers on the platform being up and couriers on the platform being up. And we only see those trends improving as we get into Q4 and, frankly, into next year. Dara, good morning. It's Guy. Um, let me just talk a little bit about what's happening over on my side of the pond, which is London. Um, London's traditionally been, from my perspective, a pretty hot market for Uber, but competition has increased massively over the last couple of years. Emily highlighting the profitability and the milestone that you guys have achieved. Is London profitable on an adjusted basis as well? I'm curious to see what the profitability numbers look like over here. So we don't disclose profitability by city, et cetera. I will say that in London, we have passed the great milestone of declaring drivers as workers. Uh, that means they've got yep. the flexibility to be on the platform as well, but they get essentially earn a minimum wage, they earn pension benefits, uh, et cetera, which we think are terrific. Uh, we're now working with the GMB to make sure that the driver worker experience is 
absolutely top notch. Many of our competition have not moved forward and have not done the right thing. So they enjoy a pricing advantage, you know, kind of taking advantage of drivers out there. This is the UK Supreme Court declared that drivers should be uh, should be workers. So we have followed suit. We think right now some of the competition has a pricing advantage, but it's based on what we think not following the law. And we think you know, the will of the Supreme Court should be recognized by anyone in the transportation industry. We think it will happen. When it happens, the UK market will be a great market for us, and it'll be a great market where drivers yep. are using our platform in the right way, which is as workers. Darren, the big conversation right now is about um, supply chains and bottlenecks. You are moving more and more into the, the freight business. Uh, you've done the Transplace acquisition. That was, what, back in July. What do you think is happening in the global supply chain story right now? What do you make of it? How sustainable is the current situation? What needs to happen to fix it? Well, I think what needs to happen is investment going into the global su supply chain. We saw an opportunity in that the supply chain was a part of the global logistics e ecosystem that was taken for granted. It was underinvested in. Technology has hadn't entered into the supply chain. And with Uber Freight, we are now using technology to connect shippers with carriers on a direct basis. What we're seeing is that that independent truck driver is quitting from fleets and actually now joining Uber Freight uh, as an independent contractor. They can make more money, they've got more freedom, and that independent contractor can use the freight system to deliver for Coca-Cola, to deliver for incredibly right. big brands because we make sure that the quality is there, we track everything, we use technology to really revolutionize the logistics ecosystem. So we think it's okay. a great opportunity. Our freight business is at record highs, and we think we can be part of the solution going forward. Dar, you've got another big and growing business. You said the food, the core restaurant and food delivery business is profitable. Lyft, though, saying they're seeing drivers going from delivery into food, wondering if you're worried about delivery driver shortages. And also with DoorDash gobbling up more market share, how do you get a bigger piece of that pie? So I think the great news for us as far as market share was in Q3 in the U.S., we not only increased profitability, but we gained share in the marketplace. So we are the market share gainer in the overall marketplace in Q3 in the U.S. And we're neutral. We essentially now offer a driver who signs up to drive on Uber. You can deliver food. You can uh, move. You can drive people. And by the way, you don't need to choose up front. We'll give you both opportunities and based on how much you can make, where you want to go, where you want to work, when you want to work, you can choose to do either. We think that's a superior solution. No one else has that solution. And we think ultimately, if you really help the customer, in this case, the customer as a driver, decide how they want to earn, you will win over the long term because you will become the preferred platform. I think you're seeing that now in the growth in drivers, 65% since January, and the growth in couriers, 80% through January. More and more choosing our platform because it's the broadest one and it's the most flexible one out there.